In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and use one of the star trackers I've been using for quite a few years now and I've really come to love. I've used a number of different types of star trackers over the years and I keep finding myself coming back to this particular one for a number of reasons. As you probably know, the whole point of using a star tracker is to counteract the apparent movement of the stars in the sky. And we do this by lining up the rotation, the axis of rotation on the star tracker with the axis of the rotation of the Earth. And fortunately, in the Northern Hemisphere, this really can be as simple as pointing a laser directly at Polaris or the North Star. When it's polar aligned, this allows us to essentially stop the apparent movement of the stars in the sky. Uh, allowing longer exposure times without getting star trails. This gives us better star color, better detail and definition in the Milky Way or celestial objects. It reduces noise in the image overall, and really it just kind of takes your astrophotography up to the next level, quite simply. You know, admittedly, it does add a little bit more work to the process in that you have to take at least two different exposures, one for the tracked sky and then one that's untracked without movement for the foreground and bring those, in, those two images into photo editing software and combine the two. Uh, but honestly, you know, it's like anything else. There's a little bit of a learning curve to it, but the, the amount that it's going to improve the astro images is so significant that really that learning curve is very minor in, in the grand scheme of things. The tracker that I have here is a small, lightweight, portable tracker made by a company called Move, Shoot, Move. And some of the reasons that I've really come to love this thing is, first and foremost, the, the overall size. I mean, look at this. It, it fits inside of this little pouch. Um, it's relatively lightweight. The battery holds up for a reasonable amount of time, given its overall size. And honestly, there's almost no reason for me to ever not have this in my bag if I'm going out on a shoot. It's super fast to set up, easy to set up, easy to take down, move around from one location to the next without really kind of having to deal with all the cumbersome nature of other trackers with counterweights and complicated parts and so on and so forth. Anyway, this particular tracker has really grown in popularity quite significantly over the last few years, it seems, and really it's, it's no surprise. However, I've seen time and time again, either on workshops, in online forums, you name it, there's a lot of people that seem to add a lot more complexity to the setup than is really necessary. Some of these folks may be trying to use longer focal lengths, heavier weight, longer exposure times than it's really intended for, uh, which I can't really recommend, but it's, it's amazing to me how, how much that complexity that they're adding to the setup, all that really does is obviously adds more, more time, more gear, more money, but it also increases the height and the extension of these things and ultimately just allows more shake in the setup, which when we're trying to get pinpoint stars, obviously that's not going to help us in any way. So let me give you a quick run through of how I set this up, how I use it, how I use it in kind of a run and gun style. And honestly, it adds very little time to my standard workflow compared to just shooting from a tripod. So this unit can attach pretty easily to just about any tripod setup that you might have. Um, personally, I'm pretty much always using a ball head like this. I know a lot of folks like to use a two-way, three-way geared head, uh, like the Benro one has gaining, been gaining a lot of popularity. Uh, but honestly, for me, it's I do so much with the ball head in the regular landscape or astro landscape photography that I don't really see the need to switch out to any specialized heads and just complicate the workflow. So let me kind of just run you through how, how I get this whole thing set up. So my entire setup for this for the tracker consists of the tracker itself. Um, you'll notice there is a, a V-plate here. It's the Allen Wallace V-plate made by MSM, Hoof Shoot Move as well. Um, and the little laser and black bracket that attaches to the unit. Um, you'll notice on the bottom of the tracker, I do have an extra plate for the tripod. Oh, I'm sorry, an extra plate for the ball head. And I'd, I'd leave this one on here permanently just to make things a little bit easier. But then really, all that I have to do to set this up is simply make sure that I'm pointing the side that I'm attaching my camera to and pointing toward the sky. I have facing outward and facing, you know, roughly toward north. I'll clamp that down. I'll loosen up my ball head, roughly point this. Now I know I'm currently at the roughly the 45th parallel, so I'll point that, you know, at approximately a 45 degree angle to start, get myself roughly oriented. Take the laser that it comes with 
attach that simply with this nylon screw to the side of the tracker itself. I'll get the mounting plate up a little bit, just an, out of the way, but we'll, we'll come back and talk about this. And truly that's it. Now, all I have to do is turn, turn on the laser, loosen the ball head, point that so it lines directly onto Polaris, lock that down, kick off the laser. Now, and once I attach my ball head to this plate here, camera's on it, I'm ready to go, that's it. And so with that, the last thing I need to do is take an extra ball head and attach that to my V plate here. Now, if you're not using a V plate like I am, and like I said, we'll talk about this in a second, you would just attach the ball head itself directly to the tracker like this, and then just adjust the position of that mounting plate on the ball head to be roughly level. Now, one of the main benefits of having this V plate attached to it as well, is I can simply, assuming I have the tripod or the ball head itself with a leveling, leveling base all leveled out, I can simply adjust the height of this V-plate, lock that down with the thumb screw over here, and now I've got a nice level platform to shoot from. And in a lot of ways, I just find that functions a lot more like, like I'm used to with a ball head on a tripod, right? I got the same kind of movement as opposed to dealing with a ball head that's at a strange 45 degree angle like this where I'm limited in the movement. I might have to try to find the, the drop down slot to get the right angles that I want. And it's just, I find it a little bit more clumsy. So while this isn't necessary, I do highly recommend it just, just for its ease of use. So like I said, we'll get this ball head attached onto the, the V plate here. Get that locked down. Spin that around a little bit for myself to work with. We'll attach the camera. We'll attach the camera to that ball head. And now I'm ready to go, just like any other landscape shot I might be taking. Get this thing perfectly framed up as we want it, right? Get my settings all dialed in on the camera itself. I'll press and hold this one button on the tracker to turn it on, make sure it's showing that I'm in the Northern Hemisphere. I wanted that a, a 1X speed for star tracking, and that's it. Now I will either, either use a remote trigger to fire off the camera to avoid any extra shake, or simply set it to a two second timer so that when I hit the shutter, I can get my hands off of it, let things settle before it takes the image. And truly that's it. One other tip that I'd offer you is, I like to figure out the foreground settings first. Usually that's around ISO 800 in the two, three to five minute range, depending on ambient lighting and moonlight and whatnot. And the reason for this is then, when I'm done with that and I wanna take the tracked sky image, I can turn on the tracker and use the same exposure values and it just makes it that much easier to blend the two together later in post-production. And one other very important note that I, that I wanna mention. Make sure you turn off any sort of lens stabilization or IBIS in-body image, sta image stabilization is all that's gonna do is allow the lens to kinda of search for stable when it's slowly rotating and ultimately end up making the stars look like they move, little lines, L-shapes, squiggles, so on and so forth. So turn all that off to avoid any trouble, trust me. And lastly, like I said earlier, you know, I, I, I've seen a lot of people make excessively complicated or long setups with this. It just creates an additional room for error and vibration in the whole system. I mean, this is already, there's enough here that we're dealing with that we don't need any extra height or weight adding to that. Um, so that, for me, that's one of the big reasons I've elected to just use the ball head with the tracker directly on it and the V-plate. It's simple, it's easy, it's no unnecessary gear. And the other benefit of this V-plate, right, is as, as it's tracking for a while, it's gonna rotate like this and end up cocked to the side a little bit. The, the weight of the camera and everything is starting to get a little bit off of vertical putting more stress on this. It's making my horizon line a little bit angled. And rather than having to futz around trying to get that back to right with the ball head or whatever setup you might have on there, all I need to do is loosen the little thumb screw at the bottom, rotate that back to level, lock it down, and I'm back to shooting again, just like that. And you know, if you are interested in more elaborate setups, longer focal lengths, trying to get after some of the deep space objects, there are other trackers out there that are still somewhat portable uh, that do afford more of that ability for you and make use of counterweights so that the max payload is higher. I wouldn't recommend trying to push the limits of the move, shoot, move like this. 
Um, instead, you know, personally I opt for the Ioptron Skyguider Pro. Um, it can put a lightweight, still semi-portable telescope set up on that and really go after some of the deep space objects with the monochrome camera, the filter sets, filter wheels, that whole thing, which we can talk about another time. But just stick to what this is used for and you're going to have a great time. Um, like I said, I've used a ton of different trackers over the years. I keep coming back to this one. I really can't recommend it enough. I love this little thing. Um, I am not in any way sponsored by Move, Shoot, Move. I paid for this myself. I just really enjoy this now. Should you decide that you want to buy one from yourself, I do have an affiliate link down below, uh, meaning if you make a purchase through that link, I do get a small percentage, a uh, little bit of money off the top on that that doesn't cost anything extra to you. It's just coordinated through the company. So yeah, I, I look, if you end up getting one of these or you have one of these, hit me up on social media, drop a comment here. I'd love to see what you're creating with these things. If you got any questions, let me know. And of course, as always, uh, like this video if you found it, find it helpful. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.